Well, hey there, kiddos. I hope you're all having a really great weekend. Here is your video for slope intercept form. Um, slope intercept form is one of the many ways we have to write linear equations. And this entire unit, that's what this is all about, is linear equations. We've talked about what slope is. We've talked about what intercepts are. And so now we're going to put it together and we're going to write equations of lines. So somewhere on your paper, you need to find a space to write this down because slope intercept form of an equation always looks like this. It is y equals mx plus b. This is the only form of a linear equation your calculator understands. It's the only form you can use if you want to graph something or look at a table. And so it's a very important form. Things you need to know about this. The y and the x are just variables. They are the coordinates of a point, but we won't ever plug a point into there unless we're looking for a solution. And so y and x will always just stay y and x. M, however, we've talked about, M is the letter that we use to represent slope. So the M in that line is the slope. The B is the y-intercept. And so when I know what the slope is and I know what the y-intercept is for a certain function, I can plug them in and I can write an equation for that linear function so that I could have some other way to represent it. So these are important things you need to know. It's going to come up as we go through this. So your first problem on your paper, on your notes, is about bamboo plants. And a bamboo pl plant can grow very quickly. So we have a graph that models the growth. So here is the graph that we have that models the growth of a bamboo plant. This is height right here, and for some reason my label got cut off. Days is graphed down here on the x-axis. So the first question says, what's the y-intercept, and what does it tell you about the bamboo plant? Well, the y-intercept of this graph is right here at 0, 20. And what that tells me about the plant is that when we started measuring, the plant was 20 feet tall. So it started at 20 feet tall. And I, sh I abbreviated because I wanted to have room. But that's what it tells me is that when we first started measuring this bamboo plant, the height was already 20 feet. And so that's what that means. It was the starting point. It was the beginning measurement. The next question asks for the slope of the line. And it wants to know what does it tell you about the bamboo plant. So let's find another pretty point on this graph. There's one right here. And I want to find my slope. So I have to go rise over run. And if you look, your scale over here on the y-axis, even though they're not all labeled, is by tens. It goes 10, 20, 30, 40. So each little line is 10 units. And then down here on the x-axis, it goes by fives, 5, 10, 15, and 20. So when we're finding our slope, we have to count that. So my rise for this is 10. And my run is also 10, because it goes up 10 and then over 10. So my slope is 1 over 1. What that tells me about this bamboo plant is that it grows one foot, because that's the y-axis is the feet, every day, because the y-axis is days. So it grows one foot per day. That's what that is telling me. So number four wants the equation of the line. I am skipping number three. It asks about whether or not this is a direct variation. We haven't talked about that yet. I've changed the order of some things, and so we haven't even talked about that. So you can just cross off question three. We'll, we'll talk about direct variation, I think, tomorrow. So the equation of this line, we want to write an equation, and then we want to write a complete statement about the bamboo plant and the equation of the line. So first we're going to find the equation. Remember, it's got to be y equals mx plus b. So we're going to plug in our slope and our y-intercept from here. We got that the slope was 1, so it becomes 1x. I don't have to put the 1, so I can just put an x. And then the y-intercept was 20 plus 20. And so a complete statement about the bamboo plant and the equation of the line. Um, here's what we know. Um, it started at 20 feet and grows 1 foot per day. That's a T. One foot per day. So that's what that equation is telling me, is that the starting point, the starting measure, it was 20 feet, and then the slope tells me it's going to grow one foot per day. So the next question wants to know how many days will it take the plant to grow 60 feet? Well, if feet is my y-axis, that's what's graphed right here, that means I'm going to plug 60 in for the y. So I'm going to have 60 is equal to x plus 20. 
And to figure out how many days that would be, I'm going to just subtract 20 from both sides, and I'll get that x is equal to 40. So it will take 40 days for the plant to grow 60 feet. How did I get this answer? Well, I got this answer by plugging 60 in for the y value because it's that's what's graphed on the y-axis, and I solved the equation. If you write a sentence about that, I think that we showed our work. That gives me an explanation. So I subtracted 20. I got 40 days. So number six wants a table of four solutions of the bamboo plant growth. And then it has says describe what one point represents. So we're going to make a table. It's going to be days because that's the x-axis. And it's going to be feet because that's the y-axis. So we'll start with the first point we have. Zero days is 20 feet. That's the y-intercept. And then we can go over here and we can do 10 days is at 30 feet. And then I have another pretty point right here. At 20 days, it's at 40 feet. And then it's not on my graph, but if I follow the pattern at 30 days, then it would be at 50 feet. And so that would be a table of four solutions. All of those would be points that would be on that line about the bamboo plant. And so describe what one point represents. Well, we've already described the y-intercept, so let's describe another point. Let's describe this 10 comma 30. What that point means is that after 10 days, the plant was 30 feet tall. That's what that point means. That's what the information is telling me. So that's how we write an equation in slope-intercept form. We find the slope, we find the y-intercept, we plug it in. So let's do a few more. So number seven here says, what is an equation of the line where it has a slope of negative four-fifths and a y-intercept of seven? Well, they told me the m and they told me the b. All I have to do is plug it in. So y equals the slope is negative four-fifths, then x plus the y-intercept is 7. So that's how you would write that equation. Plug in m, plug in b, write it with your y equals, and you're good. Number 8 here, however, is a little different. It gives you a table, and it wants you to write an equation in slope-intercept form. Well, the y-intercept is right here because this is where the x is equal to 0. So this is your b. So b is going to be 5. But now I need to find out. I'm going to erase that because it's kind of in my way. Now I need to find out the slope of my line. Try this again. I'm going to put it over here. This is B, this point right here. Now I need to find the slope. So I'm going to do change in Y over change in X. And I'm going to use positive values because it makes my life easier. And if they're asking for an equation in slope-intercept form, then it's going to be a linear function. And so the slope is going to be constant throughout. So you don't have to go check it and make sure it really is. We just know that it's going to be. I can't write slope-intercept form if it's not linear. So I'm going to find my change in y over change in x. So my change here from 3 to 1 is minus 2. My change here from 1 to 2 is plus 1. So that makes my slope negative 2 over 1 or just negative 2. So now I have my m and my b. So y equals negative 2x plus 5. There is your equation in slope-intercept form. So we'll do a couple more. You're now going to be given a graph, and you're just going to be asked which equation represents it, and then they give you multiple choice answers. The good news is they're all in slope-intercept form, because right now that's all we know. So if you have a graph, the first thing we're going to do is find the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept right here is 4. So if you'll remember, I'll give you an easy way to remember this, mx plus b. Slope-intercept form looks like this. B is the y-intercept. That is your beginning. You always start with the y-intercept. Begin with the y-intercept. It's your B. So we're going to start with the y-intercept, which is plus 4. So I know that my equation is going to have to be y equals something x plus 4. So now look at your answer choices. I only have two that say plus 4. A has plus 4 for the y-intercept, and C has plus 4. I can cross off two answers right off the bat, and I haven't even done much. So I got it narrowed down. Now I could find the answer right now without having to actually find the slope because if you will look at your line, you should be able to tell that that line is decreasing from left to right, which should tell you that your slope is going to be a negative number. Well, there's only one answer choice left that has a negative slope, and that's C, but we're going to find the slope anyway because it's good practice. So you find another point on the pretty point on the line, and we'll do our rise over our run with our right triangle, and you see it goes down 3 
and over 1, so the slope is negative 3. Put your x, and so yes, it matches negative 3x plus 4. So there is the slope, there's the equation in slope intercept form. So let's do one more with a graph. So you have another graph, and we want to know which equation represents the graph below. Again, remember, we begin with b, so we start at the y-intercept, which again looks like it's 1, 2, 3, 4, so I know it's going to be something x plus 4, so I can cross off b and d again because they don't have the correct y-intercepts, and then I can find my slope. Now, I'm to a point where I could look at this. This line right here has a negative slope because it's decreasing, but if you look at my two answer choices this time, they also are both negative slopes, so I can't just narrow it down now. It's going to be one of them, but they both have negative slopes, so I now actually have to find it. So here's another pretty point. I'll do my rise over my run, and it looks like I went down 2 and over 3, so my slope is negative 2 thirds. So my equation is negative 2 thirds x plus 4, so it's answer choice C, not A. <clears throat> so that's how we do um, equations in slope-intercept form. It's probably the easiest form to write an equation in. It's the most useful. It's the one you'll use more often than anything. And we'll practice this tomorrow when you guys come to class. Don't forget, it's homecoming week. Tomorrow is Disney movie day, so wear your favorite Disney character stuff. I know I'll have on my Mouseketeer shirt. So I will see you guys then. Have a good rest of your day.